go ahead and start recording. Okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Erin Sharkey. I'm the for Healthcare Technology Management Programs at CIS International. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mute everybody except for myself. Yeah, except for myself. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what ASSIST is doing, um, and then we'll go ahead and talk a bit more about PPEs and disinfection. Um, with COVID, most of our regularly scheduled programs are on a bit of a hold because of the travel restrictions. Um, so we're taking this time to reach out and share technical expertise where we can using the Project Echo platform. Um, today we'll be sharing about personal protective equipment, and we'll follow up next week at the same time with sessions on equipment, um, starting with ventilators and oxygen concentrators. We also have a series of clinical type uh, sessions and we can share the information for those as well. If you've registered for this session, you will get a link after this that will take you to the recording that, of this session. Um, you'll also receive the PowerPoint itself and some other resources that we found helpful making the PowerPoint. So I'll go ahead and we can talk a bit about Project Echo. Um, if you're new around here, we just want to share with you a couple of ground rules to keep things smooth. Um, the foundation of our conversation today is love and respect. Please respond kindly rather than disagreeing. It's all of our responsibility to keep Echo a safe space for conversation. Please test your equipment ahead of time. And uh, note that we have added registration to Project Echo so that we can track email addresses. It may take a few extra minutes to sign on. Please introduce yourself before speaking and don't forget to unmute yourself when you start. Um, if you're looking for the mute button, it should be in the bottom left hand side of your screen. We're going to disable video for the most part on these calls just to save bandwidth. When you're speaking, go ahead and speak very close to the microphone, especially if you're in a group setting. If you have IT issues, you can feel free to send us an email at assisthtm at assistinternational.org. Today's agenda is first an introduction. I'll be taking care of that now. And then I'll turn it over to Guna for the didactic presentation on personal protective equipment and disinfection. After that, we'll open the floor for discussion. These are a couple of resources that we found very helpful. Uh, the links are also in here, so whenever I send you this PowerPoint, you should have access to the actual documents themselves. I want to bring a little bit of awareness. Um, COVID-19 is something we've all heard about and seen on the news, but I want to talk specifically about the equipment and medical supplies needed to treat it. These screen caps are taken directly from a World Health Organization document, and it's at the bottom right. We won't talk a lot about surveillance on this page, and we won't talk a lot about triage and screening on this page, but that can be very helpful for your hospital administration, especially if you are in procurement. What we are going to talk about is case management from the biomedical side. Um, the bulk of our sessions will be based on the devices pulled from the WHO list of priority equipment for treating cases of severe COVID. This is primarily done in the ICU, so we have devices like oxygen concentrators, patient monitors, ventilators, syringoscopes, suction pumps, infusion sets, and defibrillators. There's also a list of supplies on the right-hand side that can be helpful as you prepare your hospital. The sections with stars by them are the sections that we'll be focusing our attention on. And again, today we're going to start with protecting yourself as a biomedical professional or even clinician. And we'll talk about standard precautions that are always a good idea. And then we'll talk about transmission based precautions given the current viral outbreak. Different situations call for different personal protective equipment. So we'll talk a bit about risk evaluation and requirements. We'll also talk about routine decontamination of reusable pieces like non invasive patient care equipment. Um, patient circuits and things like that. With that, I think I'm going to turn it over to Guna to talk about personal protective equipment. Hi, good morning. Uh, okay, um, we're going to talk about what 
uh, Aaron mentioned personal protective equipment. So we're going first. We're going to start with the natural history of COVID-19. So basically, these are chain of diagram that uh, take place. Normally, the infection change, the pentagon will be like uh, the bacteria, COVID-19, and from there. Uh, reservoir of survival is basically can be ventilation, all this, and uh, maybe some uh, box or whatever that you touch, all this, a point of uh, reservoir. And that, the access point can be uh, cough or touching something and uh, touch on your face or your breathing, your nose, all this. So it can be uh, transmit transmit direct contact or indirect contact, droplet or airborne. So these are a bit uh, different is there's a certain extent you got airborne uh, infection. So so you can uh, enter through a person through a respiratory, basically through your nose, all this. So you have to be careful with that. So the O's can be a person with weak body or they got other symptoms. Uh, so that's where the infection is easy to develop. So this is how it works. Okay. So normal standard precaution, uh, a standard thing you need to do is Avoid close contact with a person uh, who are sick and you keep a distance. Basically, social distance are big thing. And avoid touching your eyes, nose, mouth, all this. Stay at home when you are sick. Practice social distance, especially if your age underlying condition put you at high risk. So basically, be careful with that. Cover your cough and sneeze with tissue and throw them into the trash cans. Okay, and now always disinfect touch object surface using regular household clean like spray and or wipe them out and always keep your hand clean. Wash your hand every time. Okay. So standard precaution is basically is a set practice that you apply to care patients regardless of state of infection, suspicion or confirmation. So any any place where health service are provided, you have to follow certain recommendations like hand hygienic. So always wash with the water, soap or hand sanitizer, wipe with the hand sanitizer. Use personal protective equipment according to the risk. Respiratory hygiene, uh, basically cough ethics. When you cough, cover your face or something like that. Make sure throw the tissue away, all this. Then practice safe in injection. So you, when you do injection or anything, just remove, sterilize the infection of medical device. This is one of the main thing you need to do. And environment clean. So basically, when you talk about ICU, make sure it clean all that, the area, surface, all these are clean. So when you talk about uh, what's the dangerous about COVID-19, okay, uh, it can last on the surface a long period. At the, at the same time, on the aerosol, up to three hours. Uh, on the copper, it can la last for four hours. Cardboard, like 24 hours. Plastic and stainless steel, up to three days. So this is quite uh, dangerous. When you cough, the droplet can stay a long period of time. Okay, so be careful with that. So when you talk about personal protective, you need to talk about always keep your hand hygienic gloves, then your apron, uh, uh, face mask, or N95 
mask, visor, then head cover and shoe covers, all these are very important. Okay, transmission based on precaution, basically contact precaution, droplet precaution, and airborne. So that's the reason you need to use all these type of PPE to, to make sure that you don't get impacted. So general principle of PPE, basically anhygienic. Even though you are using glove all that, still you need to keep your anhygienic. Always clean all that. So remove and replace necessary any damage or broken pieces of uh, reusable PPE. So a reusable PPE, you have to check uh, if any any broken or any anything before you use so that you know what you are dealing with. If it's broken, you need to remove because you don't want to get cross infection, all this. And uh, single use PPE, remove and avoid a contact, all that. So put it in the proper uh, bin. Do not mix with the other bin. So what happens is when, when the cleaner is going to clean, they, they're going to mess it up or something like that. So be careful with that. Always isolate the PPE that you use. Okay, and discard all the PPE carefully from anhygienic immediately after. Basically, when you remove, keep yourself clean, all this. Okay, contact precaution for glove and uh, shoe cover. Uh, glove are one of the important uh, PPE that normally, as a biomed or even clinician, going to use because of body body fuel, all that. So you're talking about suction, all this you're going to handle, you need to use this type of uh, PPE for safety, okay? And uh, the shoe, shoe cover is basically when you're moving around, you don't want to uh, move with the germs on your shoe, going around all the department, all that. So the shoe cover is basically when you work in the isolation area, you are done, then you remove it and you throw away. So that's, you don't want to contaminate the whole hospital and your home, all that. Okay. Gown and apron. Apron is basically is to cover up your body, all that, to make sure that you don't get infection, all that, and your clothes, all that. So this is very important part of it. So. Some of the gown are reusable, but when you talk about reusable, you make sure you, you have to clean it before you use it. But as, there's a lot of single-use gown as well. So when you talk about single-use, once you open, you have to remove it. Do not use back. Okay? Then droplet precaution is basically your facial cover, like uh, uh, facial visor, gogo, and uh, face uh, shield all this are important because you don't want any eye contact face and mouth nose all the all this because you're going to protect your your respiratory area and your face all this from uh, direct infection by droplet or air, airborne all that so when you talk about PPE the important thing is Identify the hazard management and gather the right necessary PPE. And uh, you need to know how you put it off and take it off accordingly. So make sure that you, once you remove, you deal properly uh, with the waste, how to re uh, throw away all that. So basically when you put your PPE, make sure that you start from your apron and your face mask, all this, then your glove, all this. Taking off is basically make sure that uh, you remove your uh, apron first, your then uh, you remove your uh, glove, all this, and you remove your face mask, then you wash your hand, all this. This is the step 
that you need to do and make sure if it's a single use PPE, remove them and uh, put to dispose. If the PPE is uh, reusable, make sure that you send to wash in the proper method. Droplet precaution, basically you're talking about mask. So you got a normal mask that you use daily, the three plate mask. This is one of it to keep, cover your face, uh, your mouth and your nose. So this is basically a normal thing for droplet precaution. Airborne is basically you're talking about N95 because remember your COVID-19 is capable to be airborne as well. Uh, especially when you deal with ventilator, if you don't do a proper filter circuit on the expiratory circuit, chances of airborne is very high. So you need to put EPA filter on your expiratory circuit and on the main Y piece. You need to have a HME filter or EPA to make sure no airborne created in the air condition facility, all this. Then the next one, how to perform particular respiratory seal check for N95. Basically, you take the cup of respiratory in your hand and no space, finger trip, allow, allowing it bend to hang freely before you below your hand. Position the respiratory under your chin with a nose piece hub and pull the top strap over the head resting it high at the back of your head. Pull the bottom strap on your head position around your neck below the ears. Then place your finger on both top metal nose piece mold the nose piece using your two finger of each end and shape the nose then step five basically you check um, the positive seal check basically you breathe out and breathe in and see is there any leakage or any difficulty of breathing so you need to check the seal okay so these are according to the level of care so when you talk about ppe uh, these are like uh, depends on the disease so when you talk about COVID, you need to have an anti gown and a medical mask and rest depends on the department. Some of it, you need to use N95, some use medical mask and goggles and gloves. These are the steps you need to follow. Okay, this is one of the important parts is the infection so basically cleaning and de-infection medical equipment how you want to do it these are important during this period of time and norm is in the normal routine as well because you don't want uh, infection cross infection all this especially when you talk handling ventilators suction patient monitor that covid patient use so you have to remember uh, to handle with care and careful with your by using PPE in the proper PPE. So, so when you're cleaning the infection respiratory equipment, uh, healthcare worker or BMAT should wear rubber glove, all this, all the uh, PPE that I mentioned earlier, you need to have this to make sure that you don't get cross infection. Okay, patient care equipment should be single use item if possible. So basically when you talk about uh, non-invasive equipment must be decontaminate between the each patient after the patient use, after the blood and body fluid contamin. So at regular interval part of equipment like example your patient bed in ICU or isolation ICU for COVID, you have to clean every time a new patient come in. So when you replace a patient, you have to clean that particular area, all that, and a new patient come in. That's for the area. Okay. 
So for passion care equipment, should be single use item that you need to know is like um, your protection filter should be single use and some uh, reusable circuit you need to be autoclave like um, some are using single use um, breeding circuit so you can use only once and you have to throw away and the water trap need to be replaced all that suction system should uh, should be replaced the tubing and replace the bottles if a single use some some bottles that you can uh, multiple use you need to autoclave or something like that to make sure no cross infection ecg cable need to be clean sensor like spo2 all these need to be clean okay these are basically a setup of icu and uh, you're talking about cleaning and de-infection all the equipment between the use basically when another patient come in you have to clean them and replace whatever resp respiratory circuits all this okay either you are using a single if you are using single use it's only once once you are done with the, that particular patient you have to replace with a new circuit so the healthcare worker must use ppe for cleaning and de-infect of all the equipment Keep clean and de-infect item dry in individual package when possible. Okay, filter and breeding circuit. So most of the accessory is possible like single use. So breeding tube, breeding mask, cannulas, bac bacteria filters, basically EPA, and then HME filter. Uh, most of them are single use. And some breeding, breeding tubes a multiple use those you need to do sterilize that particular uh, tubing the breeding circuit so the sterilizing temperature is is 121 over 15 psi 15 minutes or 132 over 30 psi 3 minutes these are basically uh, depends on the type of the reusable circuit at the same time, before you sterilize this particular breeding circuit, make sure you clean it, the circuit, before you put into sterilize. If not, it's not going to work very effectively. It's still got some molecule of the infection things, all that. So clean first before you sterilize. Okay, when you select the infection, uh, reprocessing medical equipment in the care setting, consider following the piece of the infection equipment and the piece of equipment and uh, intent to use, the level of the infection required, and availability of capacity of service of your facility, like your sterilizing department, all this. Okay, so that's an uh, indication of uh, body when you talk about body contact intact. The, the level can be lower, non-critical, Moscone membranes, the infection requirement is high level, semi-critical, and sterilized body cavity is sterilized critical. So this is the chart that you can use. The infection by using uh, like um, um, things that you can use is like Hydroperoxide, pro acetylene hydrogen prolytes, all these are basically a chemical that you can use. Okay, so these are type that the infection you can get. Some countries maybe uh, vary, like that all, all these, you can be varied, bleach, depends. But the some or rather, I think uh, in Cambodia, or you can uh, get Dettol and Clorox easily. Depends what you want to buy. So, Same first question. step: how to clean okay. LCD uh, screen. So, mix equal part isophoric alcohol and distilled water and clean spray bottle. Turn off the patient monitor. Make sure. Uh, cert certainly cool before procedure. Basically, you need to make sure the unit is cooled down 
But before you off the unit, all that, make sure you use a proper PPE. Okay, spray some of your clean solution direct on the microfabric cloth and wipe the patient monitor LCD screen gently but truly from top to bottom. Okay, this is a simple procedure that you can do and can clean the complete unit of patient monitor slowly and gently. And you can de de infect the unit. Okay, cleaning and de-infect mechanical ventilator. First step, always make sure using PPE and power off the ventilator. Ask the user if using single use circuit or reusable circuit. If single use, dispose the breathing circuit and the filter. If reusable, dispose the filter and disassemble the tube tubing and uh, rinse and perform air level de-infection or sterilize. So this is the method for the tubing, breathing circuit, all that. For the screen, it's almost the same. For screen and a metal plastic surface, spray some cleaning solution directly into microfiber cloth and wipe the ventilator device gently, but throughout from bottom and top, side and the back device, all that. Allow it to dry and replace new filter circuit and sterilize breathing circuit if reusable and power up the unit and test with test function with the test lung. If everything is work fine, then you can use it on the patient. So the user can use it on the patient. Eh? So the next one is basically processing of uh, reusable accessory and uh, consumable. Uh, wash the item. So basically, with soap or detergent and water, basically you can. Uh, Basically, baits that things that I see patient like area of suction device, accessories, if not single use. And uh, if it's multiple use, uh, you can use autoclave all this. So, uh, rinse with the district wat water if possible, disinfect, such as patient circuit for ventilator, suction waste bottle patient clothes, patient bed, all that. And number five can be, and uh, all these clothes must be used. Okay, all this. Okay, that's the first step. And after you clean the ICU area, all that, you need to make sure the environment is clean as well. So make sure that all this fluid, tiny thing, all this need to be removed um, from that the bed area. If the ICU is wet, all that need to be clean. And uh, you make sure that all the, all the things like surface, direct contact with the patient, such as exam table, other equipment surface, the infect between the different patients. So another patient come in, before the another patient come in, you have to make sure all these are clean. So all the clothes used must be damp before, before use and dusting and dry. Sweeping may lead to aerosol. So basically do not sweep in, the, in that area, like isolation room. For example, you got air condition or something like that, or even open environment when you sweep, the dust going to airborne. So that can create an infection as well. So environment cleaning still, solution, cloth, mop, head should be changed regularly according to the local authority, but with a minimum. All the cleaning equipment should be clean and right after each use. Basically, once you're done, Using you have to make sure you clean and keep it clean. And reusable mop head should be laundered and dried after every single use as well. Area around patient should be kept clean from unnecessary equipment supply and cluttered allowed through a daily cleaning to take place. So unwanted equipment, make sure don't mix it together. What happens is if you mix 
maybe that's be some droplet or anything that you don't know. You ended up somewhere else, so do not mix things around. So uh, examine tables surrounding equipment that have been used for patient, no, known or suspect with infection potential, wipe down and de-infect immediately after use. And it's also very important to note that good ventilation of area is necessary during immediately after the process of de-infection, regardless of type of de-infected infecting use. So good ventilator look like positive pressure, proper air filtration, bad ventilation look like window and door that open in the hallway room for people in them. Basically, you need to have a proper filtration all that. Okay, environment cleaning process. Make sure you put the worker put a proper gown all that and clean the surface area with the water detergent using disposable cleaning cloth and dispose the cloth appropriate leak proof water container and de infect area need to use sodium appropriate and use de infection concentration ranging 0.05% to 0.5 area suggest remove the rubber glove and apron and dispose both item in appropriate container for further cleaning and de infection remove the ground and place it into proper container perform and hygienic. You come back to the end hygienic again. Make sure you wash your hand, all that. Okay, summary. Everyone should practice basic hygienic and social distance. In hospital setting, clinical, biomedical professionals should add up following additional standard procedure. Increase frequent based hygienic like hand washing. Increase use personal protective equipment. Protect against droplet airborne infection such as respiratory and um, face mask. Increase frequent of equipment de-infection. So equipment de-infection make sure every every single use of every time a, a patient change before that keep it clean. So the virus can last up to three days on some surface. So be sure use proper de-infected and recommended by CDC and WHO and auto cleave the material at high enough temperature for long enough. All right. All right, so just a quick thank you to our contributors, the Assist International team, as well as Christina Fast from SPECT, the Sterile Processing Education Charitable Trust. And we're gonna open the floor for a bit of discussion. Um, you can feel free to unmute yourself and speak up if you're comfortable, um, or you can leave your question in the chat and Guna or I will read it for you. So, so thank you so much, so much for your presentation. I'm Mr. Sutton from the Care Hospital. That I would like to ask you one question about uh, this infection mm -hmm. that, that the Ministry of Health Cambodia provide to each hospital for use the bleach. But the percentage is 0.05%. Uh, but now I, I heard information from uh, um, Ministry of Health in Cambodia, they would like to change the, the percentage from 0.05 to 0.5. So uh, I would like you to clarify about this also. So which one is better? But if we use 0 0.5, so we have to use more about the bleach. And if we use, we follow the 0 0.05, it's, it's okay because um, we use less the bleach. But your presentation also, I found, um, okay, this one is okay, the same. I, I would like you to explain more about that also. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, the best thing is to use uh, 0 0.5 because it uh, depends on your surface. Some surface uh, in hospital, they have like a rubber, a rubber material they use. So you have to use it less, but it's very effective. But some places you need to use 0 0.5 because you need the particular 
surface need to be uh, absorbed more with the bleach all that so it should have more stronger uh, effect yeah. so that's the okay. reason they 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 asked to use 0.5 okay so one more question mm -hmm. i found mm -hmm. some company use uh, made together among bleach and hydrogen uh, peroxide so uh, we can mix this uh, solution together or not what they mix with can you repeat again hydrogen peroxide peroxide and bleach <laughs> yes how do you with the bleach yeah you can mix but what happens is uh, it, it going to give you a strong smell so you need to make sure that uh, this particular method uh, is not that so suitable for a close area because it's going to give you some uh, difficult to breathe sometimes depends on the person yeah but you can use okay, that maybe actually. we can make it yeah yeah so about person take off uh, either than better sign what is what is the number person i think i the, give earlier so two so you draw zero seven two yep Yes, sir. But I, I bought yep. it when you use uh, three person or something like that. Yeah, if you use lesser, it's okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna yeah, yeah. clarify. Excuse me, sir. One more. I will buy. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, I, I, I would like to. I would like you to show about the step how to use PPE because. Uh, Many hospital in Cambodia, like the National Hospital and under National Hospital or CDC, they use the PPE. It's not uh, not make the standard yet. So some hospitals use like that. Other hospitals use like that. So I would like you to show about the step of how to use PPE for protect COVID-19. So PPE uh, first, you need to use your gown first. So you need to put put in your gown. Gown. Yep. Then, then you make sure that you you count, um, put your face mask. So the respiratory N95 or all that you put that first. Then you use your eye Google. Then finally you. Um, Thank you. you put your hand glove then from hand glove you can put your head glove all this head mask all this then you can put your shoe shoe cover as well so the how about the glove is your uh, one um, one step or two step glove but if glove will be on the uh, two. glove will be on the third step after you put your eye visor or google and your yeah. uh, face mask all that will be one of the second last step then you use your shoe cover but before you use glove, all that, make sure you, before you go to the gown also, you make sure you wash your hand first. First step, you wash your hand always. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for your explanation. Welcome. Aaron, you did want to mention something earlier? I did. I wondered if you could clarify how you dilute um, different disinfectants. That can't be done with normal water, right? It has to be um, deionized water, if I'm not mistaken. Or is that not true? Uh, you have to use uh, distilled water or deionized. That that will be much more better, actually. Okay. Or at least probably boiled water, just to. Yep, boiled water will be. Uh, after boil, yep. Okay. 
Guna, something we talked about quite a bit in our last session similar to this uh, was about filters for ventilators. Do you want to give us a brief? You had a story. Do you want to tell that? Yeah. Um, when we talk about filters, uh, remember I, I mentioned about HME filter and HEPA filter that used on ventilator? That's the incident in Malaysia recently. What happened is uh, they've been uh, doing ventilator testing, but they forgot to put expiratorial filter on the expiratorial output on the, on the circuit and uh, didn't use HME filter as well. So eventually, there's two, three people in the room and uh, the particular uh, expiratory line was airborne. So one of them got infected with COVID actually. So be careful when you deal with uh, ventilator because the expiratory line is exposed to an atmosphere. So make sure that you use the HEPA filter and HME filter. Thanks, Guna. Thanks to remind me that. <laughs> it's a great word of warning. And there yep. are, there's a lot of information going around that's saying it's not actually an airborne virus, um, but when it comes to droplets, you can never be too careful. Yeah, but uh, what happens is uh, when you are in the air-conditioned room, a ventilation system, uh, if the particular ventilator, uh, you don't use HEPA filter, that can cause airborne line sometimes. Oh, good to know. Yep. Are there any other questions? I know some of you joined a bit late. So yeah, I summarize quick. I saw Bore with the filter. Bore, you want to explain? <laughs> oh, wait, let's go ahead. Bore, I think you're on mute. You may want to turn that off. Uh, not hey pop you thought that you mentioned right now you should be for uh, okay but for ventilator good now yep. we, we don't yeah this one it is not a hey pop filter but uh, HME filter, filter right yeah freezing filter yeah HME filter will be on the y line and uh, you can use one HEPA filter on the expiratory line to to make sure more safe just I just use the only, only okay you can so one one of the filter one of the filter on the inspiratory should go to the Y to Y the, line to the Y piece connection right yep yep okay, okay. and now uh, another one uh, going to expiratory outlet should have a EPA filter okay mm. okay Good. I yeah. think both both filter that you have is uh, HME, right? Yeah, yeah, HME. Yeah, you need one EPA and one, one HME. EPA, one one, one EPA, EPA at, the, at, at the end of the Y twist connector, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Another one is EPA to expiratory line. Okay. Thank you, Guna. Welcome. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Guna. And one, one more question concerning you, you just mentioned right now. Uh, COVID-19 uh, can live up to three days, up to, uh, it's up to the, the, the surface. So yep. which the most uh, favorable that, that the COVID-19 uh, can live up to three days? It's up to the uh, environment temperature and humidity also, Guna? Yes, the environment and humidity temperature uh, can cause the guides live longer. And uh, recently they, they did a research that COVID-19 can live up to 28 days in the fridge. Okay. So that's something new actually. So if you are buying grocery stuff, make sure you wipe before you put it in the fridge. Okay. Oh. Okay. 
okay? Very, very helpful. Thank you, Guna. Welcome. To summarize for everyone who's just joined us, um, we've talked a bit about personal protective equipment and disinfection of equipment in the environment. Um, we've recorded this session. We'll, once we stop this meeting, um, probably in the next 12 hours to 24 hours, we'll send out a link so that you can watch the video in its entirety, especially if you've been able to see the whole thing. And um, we'll send that out and we'll send out the PowerPoint. So then you can share it with um, any of the engineers or clinicians that you know who may need this. We're happy to provide it to anybody. Um, we'll have another session at this time next week and ventilators and oxygen concentrators. So we'll go over some of the basics of maintaining. So very um, detailed explanations about what you need to disinfect between each patient and some basic PEM practices. Do other sessions on a weekly basis based on the WHO list of key equipment for COVID response. So we'll just go the list. You may have noticed that you had to register for this session. Um, that will continue to be the case for the rest. So make sure you allow a few extra minutes at the beginning so that we can get on time. Um, I'm happy to take any more questions if you have them. And otherwise, we'll, we'll let you all go on to your day. All right. Guna, any words? Um, guys, keep it safe. Make sure you use proper PPE. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Guna. Yeah, welcome. All right, thank you everyone for joining us and we'll see you here next week. Thank yeah, you. See you again next week, everyone. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. See you.